released video raising new questions about what happened in a convenience store before the deadly shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri in 2014. Now, police had said one video showed him robbing the store. A documentary filmmaker now says a second video, this was shot 11 hours before that, shows Brown trading a bag of marijuana for cigars. The filmmaker insists it casts doubt on the police version of events, and anyone that thinks differently, well, you're just a racist. He didn't rob the store. And anyone that sees the exchange that takes place with a conscience, a heart, two minds, and is not a bigot, pretty much understands what happened. Unfortunately, there's some people in America with so much bias inside of them that they just want to think that Michael Brown is a bad guy. Dana Lash is a nationally syndicated radio talk show host. Leslie Marshall is a syndicated radio talk show host and a Fox News contributor. Good to see you both. Good morning. Thank you, Shannon. All right. So people understand the earlier video, which shows some kind of conversation or exchange with Michael Brown, that's 11 hours before the second video, which the owner of the store says, this is the one in which you see him taking something, and then they say strong arming his way out of the store. So we know that there are two different videos we're talking about. Uh, Leslie, this is a video, both of these that police have seen, the family has had these. Uh, is the filmmaker now trying to be opportunistic and reigniting this fight uh, because this video isn't new to the people who investigated, including the grand jury. Well, yes, as you know, the grand jury was not presented with the video because it was really irrelevant to what was being looked at by the grand jury with regard to the officer and whether an indictment should be handed down. And that was the shooting. And the police officer did state that he stopped Michael Brown for walking in the middle of the street. I think it may, I don't think it's going to change anything, honestly, in the court of public opinion even. I think there are people who have their opinions very strong, uh, whether it's uh, for or against the police or, or Michael Brown. And and I really don't see, honestly, even as a liberal Democrat, that this uh, documentary would change anything. And I do agree that it, it just fans the flames that are not yet mm -hmm. settled uh, on this issue, and especially in that area and the divide between this community and the police. Mm -hmm. and, and Dana, the attorney for the convenience store says that what happened was the video actually is edited in a way that he argues is deceptive. He says that uh, this earlier video, 11 hours before the shooting, shows Michael Brown coming in with some merchandise leaving something on the counter and then turning around, returning all of the merchandise. Mm. Uh, he says that he was returning, um, dr the attorney says he was returning drinks and cigarettes and that the uh, folks in the store restocked the shelves and put them back. So there was something there, uh, some kind of conversation that went on. But the attorney says there was no exchange. There's a hint that it was a drug deal. He says none of that happened. Um, but the filmmaker behind this thing says, basically, if you think you can watch these videos and not think that Michael Brown was wronged, then you are just a racist. Yeah, that's insane. And I have to say, Shannon, I, I absolutely, I know this is like rare that this happens, but I actually agree with everything that Leslie just said. Uh, Leslie is absolutely <laughs> right on this. I don't think that this documentary is, I know, we're like, did we just we become like friends? Hey. I think we did. Um, I know. But this documentary, it doesn't change anything. And it's, it, I'm bewildered by the argument that this filmmaker, uh, Jason Pollock, is trying to put out there. He's basically saying that, well, you know, he, he, he didn't go in and rob anyone. He's a drug dealer, so that makes it so much better. But really, there was no, still, even then, it's still theft because there was no cash exchange and the store owners were saying that he still stole. And this doesn't change anything. What happened happened. It doesn't change the fact that he did try to attack and kill a cop with his own gun, according to three independent forensic investigations, and the fact that his he, he had his fingerprints all in the trigger guard and that the gunpowder residue that was found on his hand is consistent with someone trying to go and grab a gun in the position in which he was found to have done. It absolutely changes nothing. And it's sad to me because I feel like this is an opportunistic Michael Moore wannabe who wants to go in my city, I, my hometown of St. Louis. He wants to go and fan the flames further in my city, a city that has endured already so terribly much. Opportunists like this guy need to stop. I mean, Leslie, do you think that's what this boils down to? Because we're talking about investigations headed up um, by a department that was led by Eric Holder at the time. And, and we have the grand jury findings. We have prosecutors. We have all of them saying um, that the version of events that is trying to be spun in favor of Michael Brown's just the, the DNA and the witnesses on site. It doesn't match up. Are they all racist as well? Do you think this guy's just, you know, trying to get attention? 
Well, certainly anybody who's putting out a film, I, I lived, I'm 20 minutes from Hollywood right here, ladies, and, uh, you know, yes, definitely anybody putting out a film wants to get attention. <laughs> but at the, at, the, at the same time, although there is evidence and there are decisions, there's a grieving, hurting family, and I can understand as a mother, who, who feel that they don't have justice and want their day in court, and, and they feel that this documentary perhaps uh, backs up um, their idea or version of events. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, what I, what I mean is that there are still people out there that are not settled mm -hmm. on this on this issue and are not comfortable with the lack of an indictment or the way things right. uh, turned out, certainly because of the loss of life of this young right. young man. So I, I don't think perhaps it's, it's just uh, that he's putting it out there for attention. I do think that there are people out there who, who support what he is doing and who welcome yeah. Uh, this being put out there they so people can look at this a different way. They certainly do. And we do have to remember there are real people who lost someone in the middle of this, um, but they deserve the facts right. as well. That's only fair to them and to the memory of uh, their son as well. Mm. Uh, and, Dana and, and Shannon, not to be preyed on by opportunistic filmmakers like this guy. Yeah, you got to have more questions than answers with him right now. Dana and Leslie, good to see you both. Good to see you.